What makes you sad? Story 1. Death of my wife. It has been almost thirteen years and I can start bawling my eyes out at the drop of a hat. Sad commercial, country western song, sappy movie. I just sob. She was the light of my life and the apple of my eye. We shared twenty-nine glorious years but it will never have been enough. She was only fifty. Story 2. Why girlfriend just got cancer surgery last month. She's only my girlfriend because we can't afford insurance if we were married, and I am what most people would consider successful, but the bills are crazy when it comes to cancer. She's doing well as of now but this hit home. Before, it was life as usual, but the last six months I started thinking about what it would be like to be a single father of a one-year-old and a four-year-old. Not trying to sound selfish, of course my main concern is for her. But thinking about and I mean really understanding it could be a real possibility. Doing it without her fucked me up a few times. Even now when I hear certain songs or see something I get a bit teary-eyed, and I was taught to be a strong man and bear a burden so others can be weak in their time of need, by my old man. So this is pretty new to me. I've had people pass that I've cared about but this is just different. Pull it back and quick and continue strong for the kids. Story 3 Hat there are certain people in my life who were so important to me in the past, but are gone now. Like deceased or drifted away and don't want to talk to me, or were an online friend that I can't find anymore. I've been missing a few old friends a lot, and at the time, they meant the world to me. Stuff happened, and we went our separate ways. Now I would love to chat with them just to catch up. Nothing more, no hidden meaning. It's hard for me to reach out to others, so it's a big step one I have no direct way to contact. The other? Left on read. I guess it makes sense, but it hit me in the nostalgia and stings a bit right now. Make sure you tell people at some point what they meant to you, even if that meaning has changed and faded over the years. Even if you were just thinking about the good old days and they were special. Tell them. And if you get a nice message, don't leave them on read. Story 4. My Age. While seventy is a milestone, I miss the days of youth. I miss my vigor and energy. I wake up sad some days because I know my days on this earth are dwindling. I wish I had done more in life even though my accomplishments in my career were satisfying. I wish we had had more children. At the same time, I'm glad to be retired, even with the meager pensions we have now. And after fifty years of marriage, I'm glad to spend my final years with my best friend and lover. I'm sad there's just so little time left. Story 5 Why oldest sister died three years ago. She was 33 and I was freshly 18. With the age gap our relationship was hard and she always sucked ass at showing up. Finally got to a point in our lives that we could have an adult relationship. And I'm telling you man all I ever wanted growing up was to be like her and be with her. But we finally get to that point and she died of liver and kidney failure couldn't stop drinking. I get a huge mix of sad and angry emotions over it. But instead of still being mad and upset that it happened, I've learned to cherish the memories I have with her and the time I had spent. I learned from the mistakes she made. I know our situations aren't really close to the same, but I too feel cheated out of having her in my life. But you have to move on from that and hold on to what you have. Story 6 How many friends I've gradually lost over the years, I'm 35, just because of drifting apart, starting families, etc. and how at the same time, it has become exponentially harder to make new friends. Edit, to elaborate a little more, the latter is true mostly because of me being an introvert. I'm terrible at striking up conversations with new people and being outgoing and this has only gotten worse with age. My wife is the opposite. She starts a new job and within a couple weeks has weekly happy hours with her co-workers or she'll run into someone in our neighborhood and within 15 minutes has agreed to join her book club. I'm just not wired that way. Also, I don't want to make it sound like I'm chronically depressed because of this. I still have a few close friends and that's enough. 99% of the time and as an introvert, I'm totally okay being alone also. But I do think back to times 5, 10... 15 years ago when I was doing random, fun things with friends that I never see anymore and get a little bummed about it. 
At least I have those memories. Story 7 The episode of Finney's and Ferb where they have to get Love Handle back together. At the beginning their dad's initial attempt at an anniversary gift is this poor old lady performer dressed up as a heart. And the old lady is trying her best. Probably working that job just to get her kids through school or herself out of debt or something because otherwise she would be retired. But no, she's spending her time trying to make happy couples happier, and the boys and their dad just shoot her down and she looks so sad when they do. As a kid that made me incredibly sad because I thought about how my own grandmother worked as a cleaner and got basically abused by her clients, and to this day that episode bring back all those memories and makes me tear up a little. Ain't Got Rhythm is a good song though. Story 8 My dog is 10.5 years old. My husband and I got him in our early 20s. We've had two kids, bought a house, and have built a pretty great life together. Our dog has been there for all of it. He's grown up with us. We always have joked that the dog is dead when he's in a deep sleep. We'll say, Oh, the cat must have finally murdered him good this time. Or, R.I.P. Seamus, it was good knowing you. We make jokes about it because we know it's going to hurt really badly when it finally happens for real. In the meantime, we'll keep joking about his death by cat. Story 9 I'll play both sides, sad but proud. My therapist once told me that if I had a different childhood, she couldn't fathom how far I would have gone in life. She followed it up with the fact that she was truly impressed as to how I managed to claw my way into a normal life. The direct quote was, It's a miracle you aren't in prison, a junkie, or dead. So sad in the sense that she's dead uncorrect. I kinda got the short end of the stick with my upbringing. It was dark and abusive from the start. On the other hand, I worked my ass off to get to a happy life. I've been supporting myself since I could hold a job. Worked all through high school and college. Graduated magna cum laude. I didn't have a family to ask for help, so I had to figure it out on my own. Now I have a beautiful wife, a home, too many dogs, and a pretty solid job. Am I a bit prideful? Yeah. Does it bum me out that sometimes I feel like I could have had a different life if I'd been put into the foster system? Occasionally. What I do know is that every morning I wake up next to the love of my life in a home that I can call my own.